Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. Right. Uh, welcome to the second lecture. Well, for me personally, the first time I understood the allure and the challenge of uh, mixing times for spin systems was in uh, Fabio Martinelli's lectures in Saint Fleur back in '97, and I'm happy that he's going to uh, tell us something about one aspect of this topic. So, mixing times for constrained spin models, please, Fabio. Thanks, Yuval, and uh, so thanks for the invitation to the Pacific Northwest uh, Probability Seminar and. Uh, I was here for three months, and I really would like to uh, thank the Microsoft Research and the Theory Group because they were really three fantastic men from any point of view. Um, so I will um, talk about uh, mixing time for some, you know, simple-looking uh, Markov chain that um, uh, arise from some statistical physics problem. I became uh, aware of those chain uh, actually uh, maybe more than 10 years ago when I visited Berkeley, David Aldous, who did some work with Percy Dacanis, actually the only rigorous work at that time on this model. Uh, he wrote to me before I got to Berkeley asking whether I had any idea how to prove you know, some rigorous problem. I didn't. And so I didn't for, I mean, a few years later. And then suddenly, uh, with some people in Rome and in Paris, we start to understand this mob. And but so they're interesting, uh, but also difficult with still many pro open problems that I will mention at the end. OK, so this is a simple example uh, that is uh, due to Aldous and Daconis in their uh, original paper in 2000. They conclude with this asking what's happening in this situation. So we have a graph that is the binary rooted tree with L levels. And attached to each vertex, there is a spin, uh, with namely a variable that is 0, 1. Then pi is a product Bernoulli p, so the probability that you see 1 at one given vertex is p. And uh, just a product iid uh, variables on the vertex set of this final tree. So um, the oldest Deconis chain is the following. So for any vertex, say we are in continuous time. So with rate 1, uh, any vertex um, does the following. Toss is an independent coin for every vertex, of course. So a p coin, so probability of 1 is p and sample uh, accordingly a value in 0, 1. And then uh, the vertex check the state of its children, two to children. So if they are both zeros at that moment, then the vertex updates the current variable omega x to the uh, sample value. OK? So um, I guess that is a laser here. OK, yeah. So without uh, the constraint that uh, both children uh, should be 0, then the chain would be really a product chain, completely trivial chain. OK? Uh, and so the question of uh, Aldous and Daconis was, what, what's the effect on, for example, mixing time and other property of the chain uh, given by, produced by the constraint? So of course, I mean, the const I mean once, once you have this constraint, you should check for ir irreducibility of the chain. So one has to put boundary condition that ensure that the chain is able to reach any state. And uh, conventionally, so usually this is done by saying that, say, the leaves of the trees are frozen equal to 0, so that any vertex with the two children on the leaves is always unconstrained. OK? So. OK, so let us examine the main feature 
of the chain. So first of all, I mean, uh, a key feature is the following, is that the chain is reversible with, the, with respect to the product measure. And the reason is that the constraint at a given vertex uh, doesn't look at the state of the vertex itself, but just look at the, at the state of the neighboring uh, vertices, so in particular the two children. Okay, and then is uh, so if, if a move is legal, namely the two children are zero, then we can always undo the move by reverting the coin. And therefore the chain is clearly uh, reversible with respect to the stationary measure. Therefore, at the level of the stationary measure, this chain, this chain in particular, they don't show any, you know, phase transition or, uh, you know, uh, change of behavior, okay? They are always trivial, okay? Now, the chain is ergodic because the leaves are always zero, okay? Now, there is some, um, the, ba the, ba the bad news is that actually the chain uh, is not attractive or monotone. Because in a sense you would imagine, you could imagine that if you inject more zeros into the system, then uh, you could sort of speed up the chain. However, more zero in the system, they allow more moves. Now, more moves, they can produce either more ones, but also kill uh, other zeros, so it's not clear the total outcome, okay? Now, the fact that the chain is not monotone attractive means that, uh, uh, I mean, a number of uh, powerful, powerful tools like FKG inequalities, monotone coupling, the um, uh, paris winkler sensoring that has been so, you know, uh, really powerful for many other models, like the easy model or uh, monotone surfaces or other relevant models, they are no longer available. Okay, so in a sense, there are very, very few tools that are uh, uh, available for a rigorous analysis of the chain. Okay, so in spite of the fact that the, that the um, reversible measure is trivial, so it's just product measure, uh, so the following, the following happen. Start the chain from all ones, okay? And define the hit towel to be the time that it takes to put a zero at the root. So of course the zero at the, if you are able to bring a zero at the root, the zero must start somewhere at the leaves, okay? And then sort of find its way, you know, climb the tree up to the root, okay? Okay, so. Sorry? The day you put to a one, then we are to Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry about that, sir. No, idea. That's the result of a midnight revision. <laughs> okay, so the theorem, uh, uh, and I, I, will, I will later quote, I mean, the, the proper uh, authors. Okay, can, so the result can be summarized like that, that if P is less than a half, then the uh, expected heating time grows like linearly in the height of the tree. If P is bigger than a half, then it grows exponentially fast. And if P is a half, uh, then uh, um, it grows at most polynomially and at least, you know, like L cube and at most like L cube plus an extra power, okay, an extra constant. Okay, so, so there is a, a, a phase transition in the behavior, at least, of this heating time according to the value of P. So, and, and one half is, is, the critical, uh, is, is the critical value. So, so before going to, you know, more uh, a technical uh, result, let me explain why this, this critical behavior. Well, imagine that you work the chain and it's well defined. Uh, on the infinite binary tree, okay? Then uh, uh, on the infinite binary tree, you, you can look at uh, standard percolation, okay? And uh, if P is, uh, is bigger than half, then uh, the chances that the root percolates to infinity with an infinite path of one is positive, 
Okay? Now, an infinite path of one can never be unblocked because every, every, port, every, every vertex on that path has always a, 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 a child that is not zero and therefore is blocked forever. So in the system, there are infinite block configuration, okay? at least if we sample the initial configuration from the stationary distribution, pi. Okay? So it is clearly, it is, should, should be clear that this, uh, that, this, that this property, having or not uh, you know, an infinite cluster, should play a role in the dynamical behavior of the chain. Okay? And, and the role is expressed by, by this law. Okay, so we, we don't know, it's just we have so, some, some bound. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, I mean, you, I mean, this is an amusing uh, uh, model, so, but why, why, why trees? Okay, so that looks very special. Now, actually, uh, the above chain is just one example of a general class of Markov processes that are known. Uh, uh, at least in the physical literature, kinetically constrained spin models. Now, this, this word kinetically constrained, this kinetically refers to the fact that the constraint is inside the dynamics. Okay? So that's, that's, that's the explanation of this word. So um, the main motivation comes from uh, dynamics of real glasses, namely uh, just a few words about that. So one characteristic of a real glass is that so the real glass is a liquid that is uh, uh, cooled very, very rapidly. So that, that when you cross, when you cross the uh, crystallization temperature, the, the, the system does not become a crystal, but continues to be like a liquid. Okay? Uh, and a characteristic is that if you look at the distribution, if you do the experiment like measuring correlation in the system, you don't see anything particular when you are at low temperature. But actually, the dynamics of, of the glass becomes slower and slower uh, when the temperature uh, is lower. And there is some experimental temperature where essentially the, the dynamics of the system occurs on a time scale that is like a day. Okay, so it's a time scale characteristic of an, of an experiment. So, so physicists, they try to understand, are there models that sort of mimic some of the, at least some of the features of the dynamics of these classes? And these are these constraints mean model. So uh, there are many, sorry, large class, but maybe the three main uh, models could be, so the is model, so in this case, the graph is just the line, okay? And the constraint is, look at your is neighbor, and if it is zero, then uh, uh, toss a coin and uh, reset the value according to the coin. Okay? Then there is a northeast, northeast model. So the graph, for example, is Z2. Okay? And now the constraint is more demanding because you ask that the north and east neighbors at the same time are zero. So this is, looks more like the oldos Daconis chain on the binary tree because you ask that both children are doing something, okay? B0 in that case, okay? And then there are um, uh, Fredrickson, Andersen, uh, the, the two physicists, two facilitated model. So the graph is Z2, and the constraint is that at least two out of the four neighbors are zero, okay? Uh, and then the application uh, uh, P is related to the inverse temperature by this formula. Okay, so the, con the constraint tries, tries to mimic what physicists call the cage effect, namely the fact that a mesoscopic part of the glass is not able to move un un unless the surrounding mesoscopic region have a certain uh, property. Okay, and the common feature of all the above model is the following. Either there is an ergodicity breakdown at some critical point, and this is, for example, the oldest Daconis chain at one half, it's exactly this behavior. Okay, so the chain, say, on the infinite graph uh, is no longer ergodic. And, uh, uh, or the process on the infinite graph is always ergodic, and, but the relaxation time uh, becomes, 
huge uh, when p goes to 1. So the relaxation time here is, uh, is the inverse spectral gap of the uh, generator of the process. OK, understand. So an example of the first class, namely when there is an ergodicity breakdown, is, for example, the Northeast model. In this case, the critical value is the critical values for oriented percolation in two dimensions. Uh, so if P is above the oriented uh, critical point for oriented percolation, then with positive probability there are infinite oriented paths in Z2 and of 1, and these paths are always blocked. Okay? Example instead of where uh, uh, the process is always ergodic, but the relaxation times becomes huge when P is close to 1, uh, is the East model and this two facilitated model. So in the East case, the relaxation time uh, as a, uh, is, is essentially as this form, this asymptotic sign here means that uh, we don't control exactly the constant C. Okay, so there, there will be an upper and lower bound with different constant. But apart from that, the expression is this. And N is log base 2 of 1 over 1 minus p. It's surprising that it's possible to have such a, uh, an explicit formula, but this is actually related to some deep fact of, of the East model that maybe I will be able to mention at the end. So instead, for the, for the two facilitated model, uh, the relaxation diverges exponentially fast in 1 over 1 minus p with a specific constant. Okay, uh, and maybe I'll explain why 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 this constant arises. Okay. Okay. So there are so the general results that are available that were due with collaboration Cancrini, uh, Roberto in Paris, and Cristina Toninelli, not to be you know mixed with the brother Fabio. Uh, Cristina is in Paris. Is that so? Uh, under a very general condition, uh, the critical point where the ergodicity breakdown break occurs coincides with the critical point of the corresponding bootstrap percolation. So uh, consider, for example, the, uh, uh, the model here where you require at least two neighbors. Okay? So, and do bootstrap percolation with this constraint, namely generate IID Bernoulli variable on the lattice according to pi. And then uh, whenever a vertex has at least two neighbors that are zero, put that vertex equal to zero and continue the operation. Okay? This is called bootstrap percolation. And the question that you ask is whether uh, after infinitely many steps of this map, uh, what is the chance that the, say, the origin is still one? Okay? So it was proved uh, long ago, and uh, Holroyd here has a, a beautiful work about that, uh, is that this probability is 0. Uh, but actually, it was also shown that if p is close to 1, uh, uh, then in order to see that this probability really becomes 0 after infinitely many steps of the bootstrap map, you need to observe the system on a scale that is exponentially large in uh, 1 over 1 minus p with a precise constant that is exactly this pi square over 18 that I mentioned before. And for that reason, in, uh, when people were doing simulation, they were doing simulation on a too smaller uh, set, and they were actually claiming that there was a phase transition. Instead, the phase transition was absent. OK, so, so th this is the bootstrap map. So what we prove is that. Uh, the ergodicity threshold always coincides with the threshold for the bootstrap map. And that if P is below this threshold, the process is on the infinite graph is always ergodic with a finite relaxation time, so a positive spectral gap. Okay? Now, out of equilibrium, which means, for example, start from a IID distribution with a different density of, the, of pi and ask whether the distribution of, say, the density at the origin or in some given vertex converge with time to p. Okay? So this is 
a very, you know, the basic question, sort of, and has been actually answered only in few, in few models. And uh, so in this model and, and model on trees. Okay, and mixing times, so not relaxation time, mixing time are much harder because really you have to look at what the dynamics does. There is no monotone coupling, uh, all this, uh, you know, monotonicity argument are missing, so, uh, so coupling is very hard. And uh, also the critical behavior, namely what happens exactly when you are at the critical point, is particularly hard, and uh, the oldest Daconis chain on the binary tree is, um, so far is the, only, is the only model for which uh, a recent answer was provided. Okay, so uh, main result. Okay, so I recall you that the mixing time is the minimum time such that for any starting point, uh, you have variation distance from pi of the uh, you know, time distribution less than, say, a quarter. And uh, so with Cristina Toninelli, we proved that, uh, so the mixing time grows like L, so the depth of the tree, times the relaxation time, so that's general. And then that if, so below criticality, the relaxation time is order one. Above criticality, the relaxation, the relaxation time is exponential in L. And therefore, below criticality, the mixing time is linear, okay, and above is, um, exponential. And then uh, with these other uh, people at criticality, we proved that the relaxation time in set grows at least like L square and L square plus, you know, between L square and L square uh, plus a, a bit alpha. Uh, still the mixing time grows like L, the high times the relaxation time, so there will be a cube factor. And uh, we also proved that uh, if you are right below criticality, so P is, is, is a little bit below PC, uh, on the infinite binary tree, then the relaxation uh, that is finite. That's a general result, but actually diverges when P grows to PC, uh, like inverse of a polynomial of the difference between PC and P, okay? So, so let me describe maybe the easy part, okay? Now, the constraint looks at the, at the children and therefore as is oriented, okay? So uh, because of that, if you look, if you project the chain on say the two branches that uh, originate from the root, then uh, you still get that each projection chain is still Markov. It's still a Markov process and uh, so it, it is easy to deduce that if the two projected chain uh, have at certain time a distance, L2 distance from, from pi that is say one, then uh, uh, after an extra time that is constant time, the relaxation inverse of the gap, then also the big chain has the same property. Yes. So the fact that P mix is L times P rel, so that's true even when, I guess in the previous case, when, when it was one more slide back, when you had exponential relaxation time. So even there it's yeah. true that yeah. you lose another factor of L, so it's very different from any case we know in the easing where when you have exponential relaxation you don't lose the L. But here you still lose the L even in the bottom simple critical case. I would say so, but uh, okay. So uh, uh, okay, I have I have really to check what, but I okay. I think that this was okay. Uh, sorry, I have to go forward. Um, okay, so in any case, so the mix the L two mixing time, namely the you know, first time that you reach, uh, say, distance one from pi in L2, uh, this, this satisfies the following relation that on, on depth L is less than the one on depth L minus one plus constant relaxation time. And so T2 grows like L times the relaxation time at most. And the mixing time, which is the mixing time in L1, is less than the mixing time in L2. 
and so you have this, this bound. Um, now the lower bound, so this is a user similar result that uh, Ding, Lubetsky, and Perez obtained for easy model on trees. And the key ingredient is that the mixing time of a product chain is related, at least if n is large, to uh, the number of factor in the chain, so log n, half log n, and then the, min then the minimum of the inverse gap of the individual chain. Okay? So in our case, if you, for example, cut the tree into two and you look at all the branches of that L over two down below, they're all independent. Each chain, in they are just identical. And therefore, we get immediately that uh, the mixing time is, uh, well, the number of, of this uh, L over two trees is exponential in L. Therefore, this log gives you an L. And then you have uh, the relaxation time on L over two, on L over two chain. Okay. So lower one for at criticality. Okay, so this typically the strategy here is to uh, is to use test function in the variational characterization of the uh, of the spectral gap. Uh, so uh, a good test function, at least that worked, was the cardinality of the cluster of ones attached to the to the root. Okay, so um, it's a computation using. Uh, you know, the fact that we are at one half with p shows that the variance goes like L cube. And instead, the Dirichlet form of this test function uh, grows like L, and therefore the ratio grows at least like L square. Uh, so for p bigger than half, for example, the uh, indicator that the root is connected to the, to the leaves by a path of one is a good cut set. Uh, and the reason is that this cut set, this path, is connected with many other paths to the leaves. So it's very hard to, to detach the root from the leaves. So in order to detach the root from the leaves, you need that the root is connected to the leaves just by a single path, which is a, a, a very unlikely event. Okay? So you do this computation and you get an exponential cut set, okay? And therefore, the, mix in the, the relaxation time is at least exponential, okay? Now, the hard part is, uh, uh, is instead to get the upper bound on the relaxation time. And uh, so here, uh, uh, we use Martingale decomposition of the variance. That actually was inspired by work I did 10 years ago with uh, uh, Sinclair and Weitzer uh, for easing model on the trees. Uh, and then uh, a comparison with an auxiliary chain in which the constraint is not, you know, just one level below checking the state of the two children, but you check, you know, little l level below, so you have a long range constraint. And the constraint is, is the following, a vertex is free to flip if uh, within, in, uh, in little l step of the bootstrap map, it can be, uh, make zero. So roughly this means that uh, if you go uh, on the little, little l uh, levels below x, you find some path of zero that are able to climb up and make the level free. Okay? So if p is less than a half, it is, it is enough to choose this free parameter to be like a large constant depending on p. To get that the relaxation time of the chain of this auxiliary chain is less than say two, and then you do a little comparison between the chain. At criticality, the situation is much more complicated because one has to choose this free parameter as a function of the total length of the chain, and uh, uh, one is forced to do a multi-scale analysis that was sort of inspired again by this work by Ding Lubetsky Perez for the critical. Uh, easy model on, on, on trees. So here is an open problem that uh, uh, we, we have been struggling for a while and didn't come up with a, uh, a real, uh, even heuristic, uh, you know, solution in either direction. So do, a, you know, something like the oldest Daconis chain, but on a ternary tree. So now you have each vertex has three children. And the constraint is now that 
at least two children out of three are zero. Okay? So it's possible to compute the critical point just by computing the bootstrap map. And the critical point is 8 over 9. However, there is a, so this looks maybe similar to the previous chain, but there is a key difference. Is that at the critical point, the probability that the root is as an infinite cluster that is blocked, which is, must necessarily be a binary tree, so the probability that the root is connected to infinity in the, on the infinite ternary tree by a binary tree, this probability is positive, 3 over 4. Okay? So instead for uh, you know, standard percolation on a tree, the probability that you have an infinite cluster at you know, the critical point, 1 over the number of children, this is 0. Okay? And that was heavily used in the proof. Okay? So the phase transition, so people would say that this is a first order phase transition because suddenly at criticality, an infinite cluster appears. Now the question is, when, when p is equal to this 8 over 9, is mixing time still polynomial in L, like the oldest Daconis chain? Uh, we tried you know, various cut set to prove that it's not, and we failed. Always, always you get a polynomial. Uh, we did some simulation, and it seems that they indicate polynomial. So it's, it's, I don't know, so it's very hard. Okay, this is very hard. This is a very interesting. But below and above is the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, below and above is the same, criticalities. And, and this is related to some um, property of this infinite cluster that physicists call fragility. So they say it's, the cluster is fragile. Maybe it's possible to break this infinite cluster in a polynomial number of uh, steps. Okay? Simulation indicates that's true, okay? but we are not really able to, to say anything more than that. Okay, so cut off for the, for the mixing time on the binary tree. So of course it's pretty reasonable to ask whether the, the chain uh, shows cut off. Okay, so so I recall you that t mix of a parameter epsilon where b between 0 and 1, okay, this is the mixing time to reach total variation no, not one-fourth, but say epsilon. Okay? So if epsilon is small, you, you, you need more time because you want to be closer to, the, uh, station, to stationarity. If epsilon is close to 1, you allow you know, a more relaxed variation distance. Okay, so I recall you the definition of cutoff. So if you have a collection of Markov chain, so uh, shows total variation cutoff around some, uh, you know, cutoff point T sub n and windows Wn, okay? If for all n and epsilon, okay, between 0 and 1, then the mixing time for the n chain uh, is, is this Tn plus a window of order Wn, and this O epsilon means that the, you have to put a constant in front of this Wn that depends on epsilon. Okay. Okay. So here is the result that I uh, proved with uh, Yal Lubezki and um, Shishanu Ganguly, a graduate student here at UW. So suppose that you are non-critical, then for most scales, oh, okay, most, most scale means uh, not, not for all L, uh, but for many L, namely there are many sequences of the diver many divergent sequences of L, uh, for which what I'm, uh, so there is a cutoff, okay, maybe I'll say more what means this most, okay, and uh, so we have all this, uh, so the oldest chain, oldest Dacanis chain has cut off, and the, so the center of the cutoff is, is uh, this expectation of the heating time of the root, and the cutoff window is of order one, so it's very concentrated. Okay? So mixing is really achieved you know, with a, within order one uh, from this time. And at criticality, so P one half, then again, you know, for a, uh, at least a diverging sequence of scale, okay, there is a cutoff with again the same uh, uh, center. And now the window is 
the relaxation time, which at criticality diverges with L polynomially. Okay. So let me just give a sketch of the proof for the non-critical case. So starting from all one, when the system has reached, I mean, has been able to put a zero at the root, this means that every point has been visited, has updated its state. Okay, so it's not possible to reach the root without updating at some point all the, all the vertices because the constraint requires that both children are zero. Okay, so now if you do just basic coupling, namely uh, choose the same point to update and flip the same uh, coin to update uh, a point, then uh, uh, whenever you you, you are visited, you forget about your uh, previous, uh, your starting configuration, you become a, a, a completely new uh, Bernoulli variable. And therefore, at this time, all starting configuration have coupled, okay, under the basic coupling, okay? Now, if, if starting from all ones, the chain didn't, didn't uh, make it, you know, close to the root, so didn't bring a zero close to the root, then uh, close to the root, the configuration is still all ones, okay? And that's very unlikely for pi. So the, then the variation distance from pi is still large, okay? And therefore, uh, so there is some little argument, but it's enough to prove order one concentration for uh, this heating time, okay? Now here comes this most scale. Now using the L2 mixing, uh, that is linear in L, it's possible to prove that the average of tau L grows linearly in L, okay? And therefore, for some scale, the increment between L and L plus one must be bounded by a constant, okay? Can, cannot be more than a certain constant for all scales, okay? So for any, you know, n and a little bit more than uh, n, one plus delta n, there exists a scale such that this increment is, uh, is, is bounded by a constant that will depend on this delta, okay? And so you can construct a good sequence by choosing for each n, you know, the corresponding L, okay? Now, because of the constraint, the heating time for a tree of L plus one levels is at least the maximum between the heating time of the left and right branch because, because you need to, to clean up the left and, and, and right branch in order to update the root, okay? And therefore, there is some distributional inequality, okay? So this tau prime, tau double prime are two independent copy of the same variable. And, uh, so if L is a good scale, namely this average, this difference between averages is of order one, then it's, it's simple to, uh, to I mean, it's a, it's a simple analysis using this distribution and inequality to prove that actually the average of tau L min minus its mean in absolute value, okay? So the first moment is bounded by the average of the difference up in absolute value of these two copies, okay? And this is, uh, uh, this is bounded by twice, uh, using this inequality, it can be shown to be bounded by twice this difference, which is of order one. Therefore, then Markov inequality shows that the concentration is of order one. Okay? This is actually similar to a uh, proof, proof for tightness of the maximum of branching random walk. And, uh, yeah, it's a rather simple argument. So then uh, we went also to consider cutoff for another model that is, in some sense, is more complex. Okay, in other sense, is in other respect less complex. And this is the East model. Okay, so consider the East model. So remember that the East model is uh, okay. You look at the East neighbor. If it is zero, you update your, your the vertex is free to update. Okay, uh, actually, in order not to look from right to left. We prefer to, uh, at least, 
I used to look at this model from right to left, but then I got convinced that it was better to look at from left to right. So we decided to change to West constraint. Okay, but you cannot change, of course, the name of a model. Okay, <laughs> and and and. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, the yeah the process is going to 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 east. Yeah. Okay. So you consider this finite sorry finite interval, and say that uh, in order to get reducibility, the first vertex is always unconstrained. Okay. And then of course again the mixing time is related to the heating time of the uh, right boundary of the interval, starting from all ones. Okay. And uh, so the same group proved that so there exists a positive number, it's called a velocity, okay, V, such that the East model has cut off uh, at L over V, okay, and uh, a window that is uh, um, big O of root L, so at most root L. So, so why, why, is, why is that? Um, well, Say, say that you start the chain from all ones, okay? And look at the process from left to right. So when, when the process evolves, you will start create a first zero, then this zero may, be, may create another one, may die, and, and so on and so forth. So at any later time, you will see a rightmost zero in the system that you would like to call the front. So there is like a wave, okay? Uh, and so call xt the location of the front. Of course, it's random. Okay. So, uh, so recently, Oriane Blondel in Paris, uh, she's a student of Christina Toninelli, she proved the result that uh, so there is an asymptotic velocity for this model on the half line. Uh, namely, so there is a there is a positive v, okay, such that if xt over t converts to v in probability in particular as t goes to infinity, okay? And then she also proved that if you look at the law of the process behind the front, so you sit on the front and you look behind you and you ask which is the law that you see, so she, she proved that uh, as t goes to infinity, uh, the law converts to a, a unique invariant measure, say so call it nu, okay? So actually, she first proved that, and then using that, she was able to prove a low of large number, of course. OK, so here we, uh, I mean, in order to prove cutoff, we had to prove a more quantitative statement. OK, so what we prove is the following, is that uniformly in the initial configuration, if you look at time t, the law of the process behind the front, uh, call it mu t, Okay, then uh, the variation distance from the invariant measure in total variation, so this is a exponent, some stretch exponential, exponential minus t to some power alpha less than one. Okay, this, this we do, you know, via coupling uh, method that involves also maximal coupling, so non Markovian. Okay, and now once you have a result like that, then uh, it's rather simple then to deduce the, the, the the cutoff result, because what you do is that you break the, the front into increments, okay? So you call psi n the increments, you know, you fix some, uh, you know, width, t naught. And uh, so, so the increments now, they, they tend to behave like a stationary sequence of uh, weakly dependent variables, because as soon as two increments are far away, you can apply this result and, and get that uh, I mean, the, 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 the biggest one has, has forgotten where it, where it came from, okay? And therefore, once, once you have that, you have low, low of large number and CLT. Uh, and, and therefore, the front has a, a big O root T concentration around its mean, the velocity, velocity times T. Uh, and as a consequence, you get a concentration for the heating time of the right boundary start of the interval starting from all ones. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so I would like to conclude with, uh, uh, with, with three open problems. So 
they are not in the open problem session, but maybe, <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, so first problem is on the, on the three proof, you know, order one concentration, say below criticality, for all scales, not just for some subsequence. Okay, that, uh, I mean, is, is highly non-trivial, okay? So, so we, we tried, but we decided that can be quoted as an open problem, <laughs> okay? Now, um, yeah, the next two problems, they concern the Northeast model, and they are really, really interesting. I think that there is some very interesting probability uh, behind those, and... So, um, so the first problem is concern mixing time for the northeast model. So um, maybe I can just do a picture here. Okay. So, so the northeast model you require the north and, and east neighbor to be zero in order to update the vertex x. Of course, in order to, to have ergodicity, you need you know, boundary conditions that are a bunch of zero here. Otherwise, something will not move. Okay? And now you ask, what is the mixing time in this box if the side is L? Okay, so, um, if you, so below criticality, we know that the spectral gap is uh, uh, order one, so independent of L, or as bounds independent of L, okay? And um, uh, so if you apply, you know, the trivial bounds that relate uh, relaxation time to mixing time, then you get L square, okay? Uh, but instead, uh, we have all reason to believe that the mixing time is linear in L, with Paul Clebon in, uh, he was a postdoc in Rome, now he's in Warwick. We prove L with some polylog, okay? Uh, but in a sense, our argument is really misses the, 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 some, some key feature of the, of the Northeast, okay? And uh, so I think that this would be really a very interesting uh, uh, step forward. The third problem is even uh, more uh, ambitious, okay? And uh, so it's a shape theorem, and that actually was suggested by Steve Lally. Uh, okay, so consider the Northeast model in the, in the third quadrant, okay? and put, say, all zero here, and start from all ones, okay? Then what you expect is that, well, the first guy to update will be this guy here, okay? Once this may be zero, then you can update also this one, and so on and so forth. So what you expect is that there is a, some random set, okay, at time t, of vertices that have been reset once, at least once, okay? So call, call this set Vt, which is here, okay? And then, uh, so if, if you run simulation, it's very clear that this set actually uh, has, a very, has a very clear shape, Okay, asymptotic shape, namely if you divide it, if, if you divide the set by t and then send t to infinity, this convert to a, a nice curve, okay, that looks like this. Okay. And which looks very, very much similar to the same curve that you would get by running simple asymmetric simple exclusion uh, in the um, for the corner problem. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, here on this line is just east. On this line is east, so so you go, so you know that in time t you reach distance t. Okay. Uh, on on the next line, you you already need some help from the previous line in order to move, and more help is needed 
when you go inside. Okay, so it will be like it will be like like that. Okay, so uh, this is a, this is a really very very challenging, and uh, but again because of the absence of this monotonicity property and so on, so a lot of uh, you know useful tools are are no longer there and uh, uh, that's open. Okay, thank you. to this third one is to understand uh, and to combine this with uh, Brundel's result to understand stationary measures for a front with a given slope. Yeah. So there should be one for any slope and... Yeah. In, yeah. in fact, I think that the way to attack that would be really to prove, you know, uh, a generalization of Blondel, namely to, to, uh, to assume that there is something in that, bring it back to the origin and prove that exactly what you said, that there is a uh, you know, yeah, an invariant measure behind asymptote, yeah. Yeah, but so there is a key tool that is missing here that we have in East, and it's the following that for the Northeast, we, we don't know that uh, if you have some, some path of zeros, we are not able to use that close path of zero to a given point implies that at this point you reach, uh, you know, P, uh, say, very fast. Mm -hmm. This is missing, okay? In East, we have this result, and that's very important. That's essentially the key, okay? And here, is in, instead, is missing. So, it's, mm, uh, you know, there are several preliminary results that, uh, uh, that, that still need the proof.